Hello, then story ninjas in the house. I have another story. Some of you may have remembered me reading from Reading Matters. And the story I found today is called Surprise. And you often think, I know when you hear surprise. Or have you ever heard surprise? Well, I haven't yet. But let's find out. The story has been written by Dina Anastasio. So we'll start at the very beginning. So listening ninjas, go and find everyone else who you think will enjoy the story with you and let them come and have a seat. So starting at the beginning, yes it was my birthday, the next day, and I was going to be 10 years old. And after I was 10 I would be able to stay up, a whole lot later. And if I was lucky I would be riding a bigger bike, I would be able to play soccer with the bigger kids couldn't wait because why why do children wait for 10 because 10 is a two digit number and that seems to be a big jump from nine but i couldn't sleep all night i just lay in my bed and stared at the moon it was full and bright and it was shining right into my eyes oh my but that wasn't what was keeping me awake tomorrow i would be 10 10 years old that was why I couldn't sleep. So I tossed and I turned for a few hours and then I got up, I turned on the light. I tried to read a book, but the words didn't mean anything at all. And all I could think about was the racing bike that I might be getting. And um, I wondered if they had bought me a red one, perhaps. And I wondered if, um, well, did I actually ask them for a red one? But I know that's what I wanted. So I wondered if they'd bought me a bike at all. Maybe they didn't have enough money. Maybe they didn't want me to have a faster bike. So I turned off the lights and tried to go to sleep again. But it was no use. Important thoughts kept zipping through my mind, in and out of the corners of my brain. Would I get the bike? Would they have a party for me? Who would come? What would they bring for me? Would I have cake? Would it be chocolate? Oh my gosh, all these questions and thoughts and ideas. But at midnight I gave up and I got out of bed. In a few hours everybody would be up and I could have breakfast. Oh, would they give me the bike at breakfast? Or would I have to wait until after school? Um, maybe I'd have to wait until supper. But by supper I would be too tired to go out for a ride. Well, I went down to the kitchen and poured myself a glass of milk. Because, you know, milk usually makes you sleepy. And then I found a packet of biscuits and carried everything into the sitting room. I turned on the telly and flicked through the channels, but there was nothing on, just boring old chat shows. So I ate the biscuits and drank the milk and turned the telly off. <sighs> I still wasn't tired, but I couldn't think of anything to do. Mm, I'd never been up so late before, you know. Everybody was fast asleep, so there was no one to talk to. I couldn't go outside and play with my friends. I was bored. Oh, I was very, very bored. And then I had an idea. Hmm. I would search the house. I would pretend that I was a policewoman looking for a bank robber. I would pretend that the robber was hiding somewhere in my house. I started in the attic and I had to tiptoe so as not to wake anyone. But that was easy for me. I'm very tiny for my age. So I don't make much noise, but I'm light on my feet. I pulled the light string in the attic and looked around. Maybe the robber was hiding in the big trunk in the corner. And we know the robber, she means the bicycle. Or maybe the robber was hiding beneath or behind the boxes of old clothes and toys. When I searched everywhere, the robber wasn't in there. Mm. But I was feeling pretty brave until I remembered that there wasn't really a robber. So I turned off the light and went downstairs. And I searched the bathroom, but I didn't go into my parents' room because I didn't want to wake them up. Wise girl. And I didn't go into my brother's room either because they'd be absolutely mad with me. After I'd searched the kitchen, I went down into the basement. It was scary going down the stairs, dark and shadowy and strange. But I was a brave policewoman and I just carried on felt the spiders were brush against my face. 
So I made my, my way down the steps very carefully. The spider's web didn't stop me. The robber was waiting down there somewhere and I was going to find him. It was even dark at the bottom of the steps and I knew there was a lamp on the side of the basement. So I made my way over there, but I couldn't see a thing. It was creepy and scary. Oh, but I made it. And then it happened. Just as I reached for the lamp and flicked it on, I knocked something over. And the something was big and a loud noise and it crashed to the floor. The room was bright with lights and I could see the thing that I had knocked over. Oh my, are you guessing what I'm guessing? A big, red, shiny bicycle. I swung around and I gasped because there was a big happy birthday sign strung across the wall. Oh goodness gracious me. Balloons floated from the ceiling, forks and knives and party decorations covered the table. But the most interesting thing of all was the sign that stretched from one side of the room to the other that said, Surprise! I knew I shouldn't be down here, so whoops, I turned off the lights quickly and I raced up the stairs and bounded up two at a time. But I wasn't fast enough. Suddenly the basement door opened and my father's voice said, Who's there? It's just me. I couldn't sleep. You've seen your surprise, he said sadly. What surprise? I said quickly. I didn't want to spoil his fun. You mean you haven't seen it? No, 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 I assured him. I was just on my way down when I heard a crash. I didn't even get a chance to turn on the lamp. Well, go into the kitchen while I see what the crash was, he said. I pretended to go into the kitchen and didn't really. I just stomped a few times and stayed at the top of the steps. He couldn't see me because the lamp was around the corner. But I could see the room and where he was. I heard him walk across the room. I heard him trip over the bike. Then I heard him touch the lamp. He touched it and said, ow, I burnt my hand. And then he flicked it on. And when the room was light, he picked up the bike and leaned against the wall. Then he looked around for a minute and turned the lamp off again. I raced into the kitchen and waited for him there. Well, he said... You've seen your surprise, haven't you? I didn't know what to say, so I didn't say anything at all for a while. Finally, I said, it's my birthday, right? Now, so I guess it's all right. But how did you know I'd seen it? Oh, something shed a little light on it, Dad laughed. So now I'm going to ask you to put on your thinking cap so you can get someone older to help you if you're just little. So let's see. How did dad know that you'd been in and seen the surprise? Do you remember? She said she hadn't turned on the lamp. Are we thinking? Because I have the answer. Remember when dad touched the lamp? It burnt his hand, which means that it actually was on before. So even though we think we can fool our moms and dads and older siblings, there are always little telltale signs mm -hmm, that will lead them to thinking something else. But nonetheless, if you ever have a surprise and you've stumbled on it before anyone else, just act. So I hope you enjoyed that story and until next time, goodbye.